I observed over time that by around 10.30, something happens. You think you're safe, it traps, and then all of a sudden, boom. And it all becomes, so this is my theory, okay? I mean, I'm not the, I'm not the expert on this, but I've been observing this, okay? Uh, so what happens in the morning, all the volume gets crazied out and ran. And so what happens is supply then gets, runs out. It's all about supply and demand, okay? And so what happens is when supply runs out, volume dies. So look at the volume right here, guys. So I'm going to start whispering because I, 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 <laughs> I saw this, um, this speech, special speech guy that says, if you whisper, it means something good is coming, some top secret shit. Huge volume in the morning, and then it dies out. You see this dying out volume? That's the accumulation where you should be accumulating for the zombie move. Then boom! So I'm testing. I'm still testing it out. I shouldn't have sold this, but I, I sold enough so I could cushion it to hold the rest, right? So I'm holding here. You see that? Accumulation before the zombie move. Whispersecrets.com. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying, guys? So volume in the morning. Volume dries out. That's where the accumulation line comes in. This sucker has been heavily floated, rotated. That's the key. You need to have a demand. So this is a patented strategy that MIC guys should have, okay? So volume slows down. I'm accumulating at the line. Before the zombie move, there's going to be a one big zombie move, okay? It's like the first bounce strategy. There's going to be one big bounce after a wash. Second, third bounce, I cannot guarantee you. There's going to be one zombie play normally. High probability says it's going to be zombie play. Float heavily rotated. Volume has been shrunk down to nothing. Supply is gone. When supply is gone, what happens? No more sellers. They can move. They can, the spread increases. So it starts to jump. Look at this, dude. You cannot get out. If you short, you're fucked. And if you're, if you're, if you're chasing along and you're doing a hot key, shit, you're fucked. <laughs> I'm teaching you the easy high probability. Now it's hard, dude. This is during low volume. You can't predict this. Shit. It's too hard, dude. They're controlling it. They own the most of the float and they're controlling it, okay? So let me explain you. This is, so what I did was I accumulate. I'm waiting for that one. Remember, I told you guys in the room, it's going to dump before the zombie hour. It dumped. It's going to flatline. Volume's going to get shrunk down to nothing. Supply is gone. Then the release. Enough is enough. They, they, the spread wide. If you look at this in real time, holy shit. It's skipping by dimes, guys. Dimes. How do you get from $4.30? Dude, I'm buying this at $4.29. Hey, man. This sucker went from $12 down to $4. This is the first day of the relief rally it came. And so I'm, I'm taking a chance. I'm buying this because I'm seeing them buy it. So I'm buying as much as I can. And the moment six broke, now you're just going from line to line, guys. So six to six fifty to seven bucks to seven fifty. So I'm just... Basically, all I'm doing now is once I, it's confirmed that it's a bullish trend, I'm just buying every single washout and selling all the big fobs. So I'm, I'm recycling my shares. I'm holding core and I'm recycling shares. I'm just dumping all the way up, all the way up. You see that? And then when seven hits, I reverse because that 750 was a big resistance line. So I'm scaling all the way to the 750 line. And when back down, I covered all the way down to 680. You see that? I did the same thing for the second move. Usually it survives two, the third or fourth, it will break. So I didn't do much here. See, it went up, I covered. Then I went, you know, then I, went, I covered here too. And then now I went along here. And I just dumped it for education-wise up here. So now I'm waiting for the $8 line to short. I mean, this is pretty, to me, it was straightforward. The, the, the difficulty is this. It's up so much. It closed at four fifty eight. dollars Now it's at 6 bucks. How can it go more? Six fifty, six seven fifty. dollars So... And then also the filing. You see the 75 million effective shelf four months ago. So that, that was the fear. People like, dude, they're diluting, they're diluting. But I'm like, I don't think they're diluting. They sold this sucker from $12 for four months all the way down. So that, that was the trick, in my opinion, if that had to be a trick or an edge, right? The edge was my thesis that they're, they're done selling. People were stuck upside down. Now they're buying to average up. They saw good news and they're finally like, dude, I'm stuck from $10, $8, whatever. I'm buying this shit. And... And remember, 33% of the float is short. So it was just all that combined. That was the edge. Remember, trading, like I keep saying, you have to look at the big picture. You have to paint the picture, okay, and figure out what's going on in this stock. If you don't understand what's going on in the stock, you can't really trade it. 
So yeah, so the big picture I'm thinking is this, dude, this stock has been pressed down from $12 for four months. 33% float is short. News is crap. Effective shelf, 75 million people are thinking it's short. So they're shorting this thinking it's a pig. It is a pig, guys. But you know what, man? Pigs fly. Pigs do fly. And so that's all I did. I was like, dude, there's so many people short upside down. Everyone probably thinking it was a pig. Everyone's shorting. Boom. There we go, dude. This is the first time that Y has been moved in so long. And so that's why I jumped all over the lawn. So basically all I did once it, once it started moving was use my lines. Over six. So I, I always told myself, remember in the room, I keep saying, where is the over under? The over under, I call that the over under is basically the back side, the front side. The line that determines whether or not you're in the back side or the front side. Uh, the line that determines whether or not you're bullish trending or bearish trending. So each time it goes up, I reevaluate what the over under line is. So now I started to move my over under line. See, now it's 650 over here. Now it's $7. Remember, remember I said $7 all the time? And I wanted a zombie move, but I was like, the zombie was the $7 move. It went from 747 to seven bucks. That's a huge, big tank. So that was the zombie play right there, the seven line. You buy that seven line, it's going to crack up during the zombie. So it did zombie up. It was a harder one to do because the volume was just consistent. It was, it was really no clue. And it's actually, this, this is actually what I call conforming to a chart. It's actually very easy, actually, if you, if you think about it. The stock is very easy to play. All, all you're doing is just going from line to line, man. Just do not fight the trend. If you fight the trend, you're screwed. 69. Got all the way up to 180. Notice where it bounced off of 80. This is where I bought, guys. It's because it's supported here. So there's always a notch on the way up that gives you a hint of all these bounces, guys. It's usually a mirror. And this is why the line chart shows so much information. It looks like it does not show you, right? But this is what it shows me. It shows me these notches here. It shows me this. It shows me this. Shows me this. If you take a look at this, boom. You see that, guys? This bounce corresponds to this notch. So that's what I've been doing all these years, man. I'm using these line charts to figure out this, these notches. And these notches tell me information. Very hard to see this on a candlestick. Let me show you my candle and I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> can't really see the notches, can you? All your candles, you can't really see the notches. Let's take a look at this. So here's my FTFT trades. Can't really see the notches, can you? But with the line chart, you can see the notches. You, any questions there? This is very important, guys. This is the whole theory behind my first bounce. And this is how I know where to enter the first bounce. I look for the notches. These notches give me a clue. And so every time it goes to the notch, that's an area of interest I look at. And you, once again, this notch is very evident on a line chart, but this is not on a candlestick. And there's nothing stopping you from having multiple windows open. So I wait. So the first bounce is what I, that, that I was attempting for. Because in the morning, let's take a look at this. So in the morning, before pre-market, it started going up to 450, right? And then it took a hard dump down. So I, I, I used the $4 line to scale in. So I used the $4 line to scale in. So I just took the nibbles first. I, so I took a starter right in the open and I dumped it at 443. I'm like, dude, this didn't, you know, I didn't like it, whatever. But um, so that's what I did. I, I took some longs and I, I sold it and then I scaled in the $4 line. So I started with 419. Cause I don't know exactly where it's going to go, dude. It just so happens that 409, 408 was it. I had orders at $3.99. I had orders at $3.89. I knew that it will bounce because of why? Because that's our strategy. This is a low float stock that the float has been rotated, that there are no dirty filings. There are no uh, shares being dumped. Uh, so it was worth the risk at the open to go long. And I kept on adding until it bounced. <laughs> that was just what it is. But I had a scaling program. I didn't go all nut in, all in at 419. I scaled down from 419. I already had the cushion by selling 443. People that were chasing at the open loss. And I bought those guys that chase at the open shares. So whoever bought from me at 443 is now dumping to me at $4.19 and $4.08. And so that's what it is. So I bought it and I just started scaling some out to take some in and then just biked up. 
and I got, I, I got all out. And then, so this is what's interesting here, guys. Uh, so I started scaling out the $5 line. And then it started as a stall right here. This is why I, man. <laughs> I sold way too early. It started to stall here. And that's why I just jumped back in some more at 4, 476. I waited for the, the tank and then, and then tank back down. What can you do, right? I'm not a perfect trader. I never expected this thing to go to $8. But I made enough money, man, during this easy money. This is the easy move. This is something that can be replicated every day of this type of setup. This setup is, is an awesome setup. Maybe the next time I will hold longer. I just thought it would dump more. And then when it spiked back up during the zombie, here's 1030, guys. I caught the zombie move. I was stupid. 476 was a zombie move. But, dude, it didn't go down far enough for me. It was not very obvious of a zombie move. Now I, I got tricked and I sold and I missed the zombie move. And I waited for the zombie moving back down, but did not. And it got way too high for me to risk. So that's, that's trading, man. I take the high probability trades and I try to avoid FOMO. How many times have you chased this shit and it tanked on you and you're like, fuck, I wish I just fucking left it alone. I got way overextended. i so I'm practicing FOMO. Even though I left a lot of money on the table, I left a load of money on the table, guys. I had a nice position down here. If I had a crystal ball, I can tell you, yeah, I'm going to hold everything to $8 and call it a month. <laughs> but, you know, that's not the way it works, guys. Hey, look at this. Look at um, PED. It's coming down, baby. So remember I said line to line. What does line to line mean? If it's coming up, it's going to be hitting the resistance. So I'm going to sell. I don't care if it's a long or a short. I mean, a sell is a sell. So if I was long this position from down here, I would be taking some off at 180 line. Why would not, why wouldn't you take some off? Unless you're greedy as hell. But in day trading, man, I've seen reverse. It's like, just take, you got to take some off. Hold some, take some. All I did at that 180 resistance, 182, I sold some. I didn't have any shares. So since I didn't have any shares, it's called a short. So I end up shorting. So basically all I'm doing is a sell. A sell is a sell is a sell. I'm just going from line to line and just that's how I'm doing it. And when it goes back down each, each line, I'm taking some off. I'm doing a buy. So I'm going to have some buys here and buys here. So again, back to MBOT. Uh, this is a strategy that has been working for us, right, guys? It's the low float stock um, uh, rotating. And it, look at this chart, man. I left a lot of money on the table, guys, for MBOT. I mean, you don't think I'm like hating myself, but this sucker was $2.40 yesterday, guys. I sold this shit at $5 or something. And I'm like, dude, I'm waiting for the zombie. I just miscalculated the zombie time. That was the zombie. But it went out so low. It went out like 20 cents. How could, I, how could I be sure that that was the top? I thought $5, four eighty. I thought, I really thought I was going to test $4.80 again. I wasn't going to load up for the zombie. When it's running up, so it ran up for like freaking half an hour. So during that half an hour, I, I went, I did my research. I found out the short, I mean, the shares float was 2.67 million. So right now it's trading at 11 million. So it's already like rotated this float. So that's, that's the first key component. Rotated this float, shorts are stuck upside down. Everyone's chasing, everything's good. So I'm like, dude, I want in. I'm not shorting this thing, okay? Uh, people who are shorting this, they're, they're fucking crazy. It's called, uh, um, they're, they're fighting the trend, dude. I, I, you know, when we amateurs do that, I, I don't do that. I, if, I'm, if I'm in heavy, I need, I need to see rejection and all that. But today's, today's topic is going long a stock. So I'm not gonna talk about shorting today. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing my research during this time to see if it's a candidate for my strategy. So I see low flow. I love this low flow too, man. It's low flow. People are stuck. So it's going to, it's going to have some huge reversal. It has to. All stocks do. If it keeps running up and it doesn't have a reversal, MTSL, dude. It will have the mother of all reversals at the end of the day and you're all dead. Okay? So reversals are healthy. In order for a stock to go up higher, it needs to clean people out. Okay? And so that's where I start to stock and track a stock. So... So when it started running up, so when it was here, I'm like, oh, great, dude. I'm hoping, hoping it goes down. So I have to pick my lines, remember? It's all about lines. So I actually never went in on a four book. So I'm, I'm having in my head a $4 line. Cause look at this little, little thing here, okay? I'm like, dude, cause remember the first bounce is always fake, dude. 
First bounce, fake. Second bounce, I actually got in on the second bounce. Okay, I made 10 cents twice. That's just a test, so that was not my main entry because I'm like, dude, I, I really want it at four bucks. Four bucks is where I start to add more size. 